We Afrique is on a mission to make real change by facilitating solutions for our everyday lives. We'll be joined by professionals and influential individuals to share with you their journey and recipe for success. We ask about their methods and experience. Is it their career, their education, or is it their background? This is our secret source to enlighten, uplift, and empower the community where we are all special. Welcome to We A Free Talk, where our support is our actions. If they don't believe you, tell them to subscribe to this channel. Hello, my beautiful people. I'm super excited to have you here and the conversation we get to have today. We have an amazing language school professional, Bemi, from the Culture Tree, who's going to be sharing their story with us. And when I say amazing, I mean it. What's so special about our guest is that she's maintaining and preserving our culture, heritage, identity by giving back to the community and teaching our future generation. Please welcome our guest, Bemi from Culture Tree. All right. Uh, thank you guys for joining our show today. Um, we have Bemi with us today <laughs> who's, uh, from Culture Tree. Um, I won't go too much to who she is. She's an amazing person who's really doing amazing things within our community. So please Bemi. Bebe, for <laughs> audience. You know, I'm trying to get her name right, which I'm actually practicing. Why you keep saying that? The reason he's saying Bemi is because I just told him that my name is actually Bemi, so it's a hard, it's a Be, Bemi, yeah. Bemi, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. all people out there, don't judge me, yeah? <laughs> anyway, please, can you introduce yourself and tell our audience who you are, please? Hi, Henry. My name is Bemi Sola Isimi, and I'm the founder of Culture Tree. Excellent stuff. And uh, how long have you um, lived in the UK and how would you describe your life here? So I've lived in the UK for nearly 25 years now. I came here um, fairly young. So I've, I've spent half, I, I've spent most of my life here actually, more than, more than I've spent in Nigeria where I'm from. Um, I've spent it in the UK. So I came here to join my parents okay. who were also living here. So uh, yeah, that's it. I've been here quite a long time. <laughs> oh, excellent stuff. And when you're, when you're growing up, in the UK here, what kind of support would you like to have had as you're growing up? Obviously, you had your parents. Do you think there's anything else that would have helped as you're growing? Um, you know, I came here when I secondary school. So I did primary school in Nigeria and I came here for secondary school. And when I came here, as you know, it was so different to, you know, how things were back home. I was used to more a regimented kind of schooling. Okay. Um, I feel like even when I, I feel like when I came here, I, I my I, I kind of dumbed down my <laughs> education. I don't want to say I became dumber. <laughs> but I was I was quite advanced, you know, because I feel like a lot of people say, Oh, African education is terrible. But I felt like I was learning more. Yeah. when I was in Nigeria than when I came here. So a lot of the things that you already were learning in school, I already knew them. Yeah. So, you know, back home, if you're really smart, they put you up a year. You don't need to follow the school year. I was already kind of advanced in what I knew. So in terms of education wise, I felt like it did, it did kind of hinder me a little bit because I had to like listen and, and I, felt, I felt I was behind. Okay. Um, but in terms of lifestyle, it was different because obviously back home, we play outside. Um, but here it was cold. Like, I remember we came, I think we came in summer, but it was still quite cold. It was freezing. Yeah. And I remember having to always be indoors and watch TV. And I never had, I, I think we used to come back from school, drop our uniform, take our, take our bags down and go and play outside. Yeah. <laughs> so when I came here, it was a totally different lifestyle. It was a bit of adjusting to, and my accent as well. Obviously I had a Nigerian accent. And so people would make fun of my accent then as well. But you know, as a child, you lose the accent because the, more, the younger you are, the more you kind of acclimatize to an environment. Yeah. So I acquired the accent and that was fine. But in the beginning, it was quite hard for me to kind of get used to being in cold London. Yeah, I, I had this, I had a similar experience. I remember from Uganda. Um, yeah, we used to come back from school similar to you. You drop yeah. your bags and then you just maybe have something, a quick snack at your grandmother's snack, house or your mom's house and you're out, you know? <laughs> and then you just play until nighttime and then you come back and you have so much open you know, space. Exactly. Yeah. You know? so, and then obviously the schooling also I remember coming here and then the kids were laughing at my English and I was like okay I thought I was speaking good English <laughs> Yeah. but I was like okay maybe uh, I'm not but to be honest I was like ah, you know forget about these kids what do they know you know so I just kind of um, pushed on um, you, run, you run a language school uh, when did you start and why did you start it? So actually what, I'll tell you the beginning of Genesis it was, it was in 2015 my daughter was two my first daughter was two at the time yeah. And she would always watch, I would notice that when, you know, when you're busy as a parent, you just give them an iPad and they're watching YouTube. Yeah. And my daughter, she would always like listen to nursery rhymes and sing along. And one day she was listening to a Hindi nursery rhyme 
and just singing along and dancing. Like, I said, like, how do you understand that? So let me, because I one thing I, sh- I should say is that I, um, I'll talk more about that. But I'm very much about passing on my language to my to my children, to my offsprings. Yeah. And I wanted her to learn Yoruba because we spoke. I spoke only to her in Yoruba when she was younger. Um, so I was looking for nursery rhymes in Yoruba, and I yeah. searched and searched, and I couldn't find. I think there was just one video at the time, um, a guy playing a guitar and, and singing a Yoruba nursery rhyme. But there was no animated nursery rhymes or cartoons. Yeah. So I had this brainwave of creating um, an animated nursery rhyme. Um, and so I got the, I think it was Old MacDonald. Baba MacDonald was the first one I did. I wrote it down in Yoruba. Baba MacDonald, Nioko. Put it in Yoruba. Um, and then I recorded it. Went to a studio, recorded it. Looked for an animator. Got him to animate the song. I put it on um, YouTube. And before you know it, people were like commenting. And it was, it was the views were going up. And I did more and more videos. So it started from YouTube. Yeah. Um, and people comment and say, oh, how do you, you know, I want to teach my daughter Yoruba as well. How do I go about it? There's no, there's no resources. There's nothing. So I had this another brainwave again yeah. to start doing classes. So I started doing nursery rhymes, like um, rhyme time for toddlers and their parents. And we'll just rent a place and we'll, you know, a group of us just do nursery rhymes and sing and dance. And from there, it kind of grew to all the children. And now we obviously, we do different, we do so many things, but I'll tell you more about what we do. <laughs> okay, excellent. Yeah. Because I did, I did go onto your YouTube page and I did see the old McDonald uh, in Europe, yeah. obviously, but I was like so impressed. I was like, oh my God, this is actually untapped market that really yeah. needs to be out there and to help our people in terms of understanding. Because you know, children, the way they, the way they learn, as you know as well, even, even when we learn ABC, we learn it through music. Yeah. A, B, C, D, E, H, a lot of things that we learn from when we're young is through music. So I know that music is a very kind of important way and it's a very, um, it's a good way to teach language for yeah. children anyway. And even for adults as well, you, we learn more when it's musical. So yeah. one thing I, like I try to do is even in my classes, we include a lot of songs, a lot of stories, making it fun because yeah. it has to be fun for kids to be interested in learning. Excellent. Excellent. Wow. It's incredible, honestly. Um, I see that you run also, there's, there's a couple of different pillars of your business. There's the, the yeah. Culture Academy, um, yeah. you have the YouTube for the children, and obviously you do also events and webinars similar to this, um, yeah. which are really, really great in terms of like thought leadership and these kind of situations where you try to yeah. people and make sure people understand. Um, can you explain a little bit of each uh, section? Of each part. Yeah. So, you know, the idea of the name culture tree comes when you think about a tree, a tree has different branches and that's the idea of what we want to achieve. The, the, there's different branches to what we do. So but we have, it, there's, there is only one root, which is the culture. So everything that, we, that stems from it is, it's all about promoting and preserving our culture and making sure people all around the world kind of have a love and um, an affinity to that, like to, to, to where they cut to their culture and their roots. Yeah. So um, with, the language classes as you mentioned we do language classes at the moment we do Yoruba only but we plan to expand into other languages other African languages as well uh, and then we have as you said the, the events so obviously because of this COVID now we can't do anything face to face anymore so a lot of our events are online and yeah. the webinar you mentioned is one of them as well it's uh, we had we just finished a three-part series webinar and it was titled Raising Rooted Children and the idea was that we're well, just to get parents together to just discuss you know, we all have the same kind of issues. We all have the same kind of, you know, wants and needs about our children, about wanting them to, you know, know our culture and our mother tongue. How do we do that? How do we go about making sure that even though that we live in a diaspora, we live in the Western world, we still remain connected to our roots. Yeah. Um, so that was what that was about. We do events, um, you know, we do, we used to do face-to-face events like Christmas, special events like Black History Month. Unfortunately, this month, we're not doing anything this month, but we usually do do stuff around Black History Month just to celebrate and, um, about, the, about our history um, and then we have the TV the production side of things so we've done a lot of you know cartoons we have stuff on TV in the UK and in Africa as well and now we've just worked with the BBC at the moment to, pro- to promote more languages on their on their platform oh fantastic that's the, that's the production side of things yeah so it goes to show that hard work and consistency is uh, paying off it does, yeah, it does. It's been it's been a long, hard road, you know. But as they say, tiny drops make an ocean. So it yeah. started off really small. It's just a seed, you know. Just plant the small seed, and before you know it, it, it would germinate. It would become bigger and bigger, just like the tree. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's something we definitely need, yeah, especially within our society, and just trying to embrace the culture. And how much do you think your culture have to do with the type of person you are? To be honest with you, I would say it, it, it basically who I am. I like. When, my, I'm a Yoruba, I'm a Yoruba, whenever people ask me where you're from, I'm, I'm like, 
I am from Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Yoruba, I'm a Yoruba woman. So I, I, I'm very much kind of rooted in who I am. And I, my children are the same. We, you know, we speak, I speak the language to them. We eat, we eat the food, we watch the movies. There's a lot of things that kind of, uh, it's, it's all, I, I surround myself with my culture, my language, because intentionally so, because obviously I live in London. Yeah. If I don't do that, nobody else will, you know? Um, so it's very much part of who I am. No, it's fantastic. Um, you know, for, for some of us, obviously, who have come here, um, it's almost like we're losing a little bit of our identity. It's, it's like in terms of like country of residence, the upbringing, or trying to kind of fit into society. Yeah. And we almost don't see it as a priority, a priority because we live yeah. in a multicultural environment. Yeah. But yeah. how can we make adjustments to fix these underlying issues that we may have as individuals and also maybe within the society we're trying to fit in yeah um i think africa is multicultural as you know we are by by nature of who we are we are we are a multicultural nation and there is even within countries you see different cultures so we it's it's who we are to accept and embrace different cultures yeah. like you have a lot of people who are into marriages for example you have you know even from the same country you have different tribes marrying each other and you learn to like work together and get to know more about each other's culture so yeah. in that sense we're already kind of it's already in us to be like that and yeah. I, know, I know a lot of people who speak different multiple languages you know even in nigeria we have people who speak yoruba hausa Igbo, and they can speak all these languages very well so when we come to the western when we come to diaspora for example i don't think it's a case of us losing who we are and um, but it's just about embracing other cultures but not losing our, our own identity so remember who we are in ourselves and then embrace other ones because that's who, that's who we are. But I think a lot of us, when we come to, you know, for, I'll speak for Nigerians, because I don't know any other kind of culture. When okay. we come here, for example, when a lot of people who came here, maybe back in the 80s, 70s, they started having children, they didn't yeah. pass on their language to their children because they wanted to assimilate into the society they were in. And they yeah. were advised, some of them were advised to not, you know, if you speak them, to them, they might speak later, they might not understand English, all false. You know, we have, we have people who, all the people who say they don't understand their language, I find that hard to believe. Like, how can you, how can you, who, so who are you? If, because a yeah. language is very much part of who we are. If you don't, if you don't understand who you are, where, where are you going? Anybody will tell you anything. So I think it's all about having that pride in our self identity and building it into our children as well. So for me, for example, when I, my, my kids all have, I'm not saying nothing against people who have English names. My kids all have, traditional Yoruba names because I want them to know that they're Yoruba, they're, they're where they're from. Yeah, yeah. And if somebody questions that, they, they can they can answer them. This is what my name means. And you know, it's fine for you to have your name, but this is what my name means. Um and then also with the food that we eat as well, a lot of us, you know, we kind of we embrace the food, we embrace the clothing, yeah, yeah. but we don't embrace our language, which is what we need to do more of. That's my main thing is embracing more of, you know, teaching our children our language and passing it on to the next generation. Okay. No, no, I totally, I totally understand. I think it's, it's based on our um, understanding of who we are, um, accepting that we can actually be that particular person or yeah. that particular kind of environment, but then understand that, you know, within ourselves, we have to kind of push our own yes. realism and, and our own kind of pride and everything else. But I and think respect you sorry Henry I was going to say that people respect you even more when you're yourself yeah. when you bring your whole self and you're not trying to be somebody else when you're you know even when you know like when they tell you international food day for example when when I go to my I make jollof rice I make chin chin and yeah. they're like oh what they, people are people like are interested in knowing more about you become more of an interesting person when you're not trying to be somebody else yeah. so that that's that's one thing I, I've noticed anyway yeah, no, I think I think you're, you're you're spot on because um, you know if people understand, okay, this culture is very different, and they become inquisitive. You know, they're like, oh, okay, let me find out more. Let me ask questions. You know, so yeah. I think that's um, a really really good point. So, what responsibilities do do we have as individuals to educate ourselves, let alone to pass in like the knowledge to others? Um, yeah. I think I think the onus is on us. Um, a lot of us, especially Africans, we say, oh, it's the government. The government are not doing enough to about this. They're not doing enough, you know, for, for society. They're not doing enough to, to um, promote our culture, promote our tourism. Yeah. You, we are the ones who should be doing that. We are our own ambassador. We should be, amb we are an ambassadors. Wherever we are in the world, we are the country's ambassador. So whatever yeah. you want to do, you, wherever you feel there's a gap in, like, for example, I spotted a gap in the market for yeah. entertainment for children. And, I, and I'm filling that gap. 
So wherever we go, we find ourselves. If there's something that we feel needs to be done, the onus is on us to make that change and not expect society or outside or the external factors to make changes. It comes from the inside. We need to make that change. Yeah. And uh, let's say, for example, you have individuals, because I know some others, for example, who don't speak their language. Mm. And it could be a case of uh, social circles that is uh, peer pressure. Um, mm. It could be a lack of knowledge, lack of resources or... Mm -hmm books um in terms of understanding their history and everything else yeah, yeah. what what kind of um support do you think we need to put in place for these individuals obviously you're doing with the culture tree yeah uh, which is an amazing um kind of uh, area that you've targeted and is very well needed mm -hmm. what kind of other support do you think we can put in place um i think to be honest in terms of support w there is a it's more about community Okay. So I feel, I feel like in a way we need to be, to, to have a stronger community. So for yeah. example, I know that like, for example, um, the older generation are the custodians of the language, right? Yes. Like, you know, about the grandmothers and the older people who know the language. I feel like they should take up the responsibility a little bit more to, you know, create nests. We, they have this thing that they do in like some um, indigenous languages where they have language nests. So the yeah. grandparents are the ones who kind of maybe Saturday school and yeah. they kind of teach the younger ones, the languages. So that's a, that's a very, that's something that we could be doing more of in terms of taking it on ourselves to kind of, um, as a community, as a society, to make changes. And mm. um, other things that we could do is obviously, if you're, if you yourself, if you wanted to write a book, what's stopping you from writing a book? Like, how, what's stopping us individuals from doing things? And that's what we don't, a lot of us just, um, and, and, I, and I, I can't stress this enough, a lot of us think that somebody else should do it. We never want to take responsibility for doing something. If you can speak the language and you think and you're feeling like, oh, um, nothing has been done, then do something about it. Let the onus be on you. Let's start taking responsibility for our own, um, our own growth, you know? And that's one thing I have to, I, I've noticed that we always look for other people to do things for us. Yeah. And we don't want to do it ourselves, but we yeah. can. Yes, I, I totally agree. Um, yeah, I totally agree, honestly, because I, I can speak my language, but I can't really write it that well. I know some of, so I'm working on ways to understand how to write it. Yeah, um, but, as yeah but, you're doing something, but you're doing something about that. Yeah. You're, you're taking it upon yourself. And let me just say that you don't have to be able to write it. You can, you can collaborate. And that's one thing yeah. I, th I want to stress as well is collaboration. So I didn't, I don't know how to do animation. All I did was just, you know, write the songs. I needed somebody else to do the animation. I needed to go to a studio to record the songs. I needed yeah. somebody else to do different things. So if we collaborate with each other more, we can get things done. So that's another thing is collaboration. Oh, excellent stuff. I think, I think that's the other angle that we're actually doing at We Are Freak is just trying to make sure that we collaborate with right-minded people who yeah. understand what the goals are and, trying to push the positive message that we, we need to do. Um, how can we change our, our mindsets? Uh, because I think that's almost kind of a deeply rooted, um, I don't oh, know, systematic way. That's a rabbit hole. That's a rabbit hole right there. Huh? <laughs> we'll you be know, here all day talking about that. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> how can we change mindsets? Yeah, and kind of develop pride in our culture and you in know, our like culture. life and everything else. This this is deep, you know. It's 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 gone to, it's too many years of, I don't want to stand too political here, but it's just, there's, there's just too many things that we've been fed and we've believed for too long yeah. that's been passed on to us as well. So our parents believed it and they passed on to us and we believe in it. So I think there needs to be a complete change of mindset in terms of, you know, the Western world being kind of English being a superior language to any other language. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not um, a kind of a pan, I'm, I am pan-African, but I'm not so much so that, oh, you shouldn't speak English. Because if I didn't speak English, we won't be talking right now. Yeah. English is for communication. But I feel like there has to be a, an emphasis on us learning our mother tongue because we are from Africa. We do have a language and it is a gift that we've been given. Not everybody has a language, you know, not everybody has this kind of culture that we have, this rich heritage that we have. Yeah. And I feel like we need to make sure that we understand how rich this heritage is. Not everybody has that. So for me, in terms of changing mindsets, I think we need to educate ourselves and it's about understanding our history as well. Understanding that we come from, a, we have a very rich history um, and we need to pass it on to our children again. This yeah. thing about passing on to our children yeah. um, and just understanding and changing the mindset that it's not always, the Western world is not always, you know, the pillar we should be upholding. Let's start from ourselves. Let's start from our roots and grow our roots, plant our roots. So we become, you know, like a tree 
that they seem to be. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> I think it's, uh, you managed to answer that in a nutshell. I think everybody now understands what needs to be done, which, which I think you, you're completely right. We need to actually start within ourselves and make sure we understand our history. I think, I think understanding the past, contributing to the present and making sure we, we develop a future collaboratively. Or... Repeat that. So repeat that again. <laughs> yeah, understanding the past, contribute to the present to make sure we develop a future. You know? Bang. You know, so uh, I think that's the way we kind of have to approach it because I think so, so much of the time we cling on to the past for so long and blaming yeah. the past, blaming yeah. the past. But yeah. what are you doing now? You know, exactly. what are we actually doing now? So exactly. you know, co communication like this between us, this is what yeah. you should be contributing towards. Yeah. It will be interesting to hear what people's comments are down below just to see, you know, what do you think that we need to do to make sure we kind of progress forward and not think backwards you know and kind of get in the rabbit hole as you said of the systematic ways of being pushed in one direction and only understanding one type of way of going forward yeah i mean there's so many if you think about it there's so many opportunities that we can create for ourselves and i know that i'm speaking of this a lot of people say oh yeah you're just saying this because you're in england and you know there's opportunities for you over there you have the support but you know i there's there's time there's things that i started off with nothing as well, like in terms of, I'm talking about my business. Yeah. It was just an idea in my head. I didn't, it wasn't as if I had millions in the bank and I had so much money. It was just something that I spotted a gap in the market and something that I wanted to change. And I didn't, I didn't want to wait for somebody else. I could have been, you know, even now, when I, do, when, when I put videos out, you have people still commenting, oh, that's not even, you're not even speaking it properly. We still get criticisms, but you have to close your ears to that and just focus on your focus, like focus on your focus, yeah. basically. And just know that you, what you're doing is for the bigger growth. So I'm living, a, I'm living um, a heritage for my children. I'm living something that I know that years to come, my children will benefit from this. Yes. Um, if like you know, we have a lot of pe older people who blame their parents. Say, oh, the reason I don't speak your body, the reason I don't speak English, or I don't speak my language or your language because you didn't teach me. Yeah. What are you now doing? So your parents didn't teach, as you said. They focus on the past. Your parents didn't teach you. Fine, that's gone. But what are you now doing to learn? Are you making efforts to learn? Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think I think that's true. And uh, you know, with criticism, the problem is within our own society and our own communities. We're, we're almost kind of driven to push each other down instead of thinking, okay, look, this person's actually making a, a contribution here. Yeah. Maybe we should support them. You yeah. know, how can I contribute? Maybe I, I, I might have a book in my shelf that it might be really worthwhile for this person to understand and know. Yeah. Oh, maybe let me just send them a message to say, you know, yeah. oh, you know, I, I want to help. I know I cannot be there to help you, but yeah. let's ne we need to change the way we think in terms yeah. of Thinking, you know I, have, I, have, I do have to say that I do, there are people who do support and they do I have people who send me books that like their, their mum wrote like poetry like proverbs because you're about my language is rich in proverbs yeah. and I had a lady who just sent me said her mum has written a book of proverbs and she wanted to publish it can she send it to me so I do have people who want to support and I love that and I think that's what we need to do more of that yeah. people will send me books, and how can I volunteer I love what you're doing do you need a teacher to but I'll volunteer my time for free so you, you have people who do want to help. So we do have a lot of, there is a community. So we do, we have good sides to us as well as Africans. Yes. There are people out there who do want to help and support when you're doing something that's fantastic. So we need to applaud those people as well. No, honestly, those people, we definitely support you. And we, support, we, we, we love, love you. We love people like that. You know, the we, other one, uh, <laughs> uh, the other one for me, there's, there's one thing we've learned. Basically we've learned that, you know, accept uh, criticism yeah. and, uh, and kind of being praised with gratitude, regardless of which way it is. If you accept both with gratitude, it, it, you don't really get affected as much because a lot of people get drawn yeah. too much to the negativity. Because yeah. you know, we, we just got to think. It's constructive. You know as long as criticism is constructive and it's trying to help you do better, then that's fine. But if it's just, just like, oh, you're not even just you know, not nothing constructive about your criticism. It's just to put somebody else down. Then don't do that. Don't be that yeah. person. <laughs> yes, we need to move forward, guys. Move forward. Be in the present and let's move forward. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, being proud of where we're from, uh, as, we, as we've discussed, kind of is, is slowly disappearing sometimes within some of the communities and also like kind of back in the continent. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ba based on like uh, societies and everything else. How can we almost pivot away from that in terms of accepting, okay, these are the ways but we really need to kind of understand, okay, who we are, 
how can we flourish as as communities i think um it's got, it goes back to what we said again about mindsets so yeah. back to the mindset thing again we need to change it's, we need to change our mindsets and it starts from our home so as i said it's not it's not from the government it's, it starts from our own homes and yeah. i think a lot of the um, I, again i speak for nigeria they're doing that a bit with the music so for example you know before you'd go to a party and they'll be playing all these um, american music and yeah. and i love what they're doing back with afrobeats kind of movement where they kind of they've just I don't know how they've done it, but they've kind of exported their music to the world and yes. they've stood they've stood that they they understood that, you know what, you know what, we need to build something. And it's young, it's these young women and young men and women that are doing it, just realizing that we can't just rely on the government to give us jobs. We can't rely on people to keep, you know, um the Western world to keep giving us, you know, these opportunities. We need to create these opportunities ourselves. So a lot of people are now freelancers, they're not entrepreneurs, yeah. they're now doing music, even even people who do food. Back in the days, anybody who sold food would be like, Oh, look down upon you're selling food. But yeah. now the people who actually make a good living from doing things like, you know, making clothes, clothing like some of what I'm wearing today. So we need to kind of feed into our own economy. Um, and then that gives us a sense of pride as well. Cause if you'll keep taking, the hand that keeps taking will always be down here yes. but once you once you start giving something of yourself you become kind of more proud of who you are and you know your 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 country your your identity so i think it starts from us really just knowing that you know what let me make the most of where i am it could be i i'm in the uk so i speak for the uk um i have my own challenges here as well it's not all rosy you know people think that because you live in the western world it's all it's everything is grand and rosy so i understand that maybe back home somebody might be watching this and thinking oh i don't have much whatever wherever you are whatever you have in your hands use it yeah. it could be it could be a language teacher you could be you know a, a seamstress you could be a caterer that would kind of build us as a society and i know you're referring to culture here but it can, it's, it works hand in hand as well because when we become a proud nation and yeah. we're not always taken it's a pride thing for us you know yeah now i think i think you're spot on um and as you mentioned you know the young entrepreneurs now have realized that you know they can tap into markets that were not readily available or for example the afrobeats you know since afrobeats is coming to play it's, mm. it's gone global you know it's now a thing that everyone sees oh it's yeah. really cool to listen to afrobeats which is a sense of pride again you know we've actually it developed is. something that people understand they can relate to you they can dance to and as you said music in terms of vibrations is yeah. such an important thing that we understand most things and accept yeah even our fashion as well we you know a lot of a lot of when you see a lot of these fashion you're like oh this has been done before because even our even hairstyles yeah like, I think it, it, people are going to think that oh, this lady is so pan-African. Even our hairstyles as well. <laughs> we need to be proud of our hair and, you know, wear it with pride and not always, you know, this standard of beauty that the Western world thinks. So it, it starts, there's so many things that we could talk about, but I'm not going to go into a lot of it today because we're going to be here forever. So <laughs> it starts with us, basically. Yeah, I think, as, as you said, yeah, it starts with you. Just be individual, be proud of where you're from, you know, accept mm -hmm. it, embrace it. Obviously, don't neglect the other communities and other societies really? and cultures because for us to I communicate, mean, we have to be in the system and understand how to, the system works because otherwise we won't be able to communicate. And, you know, for example, if you want to use, um, I don't know, to buy a ticket at a train station here, for example, yeah. you need to understand English. English. You know, so. Even in Nigeria, English is the lingua franca, so you do need to speak, your, you need to speak English um, yeah. because that's the language of commerce, that's the language of the world. Yeah. But I, for me, it's more about the identity. Language for me is about more about identity, and it's more about you know understanding your mother tongue, which is what I'm trying to you know say is that you can speak multiple. We're a multicultural society. You can speak multiple languages. Yes. Let your children also understand your language as well. Yeah, I think that's your your spot on there because as you said, multicultural societies. Yeah. You know, in Africa, multicultural societies are Absolutely. so vast. I mean. 54 countries, how many languages within each country? Yeah. And then a lot of people think, okay, once you move to the West or you go to a different area, you mm -hmm. shouldn't really embrace it, but it should be exactly the opposite. We should Take be, it with you. You know? Take um, it with you. I was going to say, so how can, um, we usually give our lovely guests a two minute window for you to kind of tell us more about your company or some advice that you like to give to our audience. What would you like to say? Any? <laughs> what I've already said. 
<laughs> no, as you know, like culture, culture tree is all about, you know, preserving and promoting our culture, our language, our heritage. And I just, we just want people to have that love and do just create opportunity for people to experience. So it's, I'm not just thinking, you know, as an African, I feel like a lot of things we're, we're, we can be quite, we don't, I don't want us to be insular thinking this is my culture. This is my language. Let people see it, share it with the world. So for me, for example, being here in the UK, I feel like I'm an ambassador for Yoruba. I'm, an, I'm, I'm, I'm basically trying to let people know the beauty um, of my culture. Yeah. So even in, in the productions that I do, we do them in a language because I want people to learn. Like the same way people manage to export French and Spanish and they took over the world and let, you know, let people learn. I would love um, a non-Nigerian person, a non-Yoruba person to say that oh, I want to learn Yoruba yeah. because because you make it so sound so beautiful you 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 represent it so well and yeah. i want to be able to like you know talk to you in your language so for me it's about just making sure like wherever you are in the world express yourself be true to who you are express yourself you know the way the better you can so don't worry about you know people thinking that oh gosh i'm i'm this person i'm not going to understand them or no i feel like it's important for us to share ourselves with other people so they can build that love as well and then also, what else would I say about just being in the in in the diaspora? I'll say, don't forget home. <laughs> yeah. Let's not forget home. It's uh, like when I say home, I mean that you're like you know a lot of people. Home, home is wherever you. I guess home is a relative word because home could home is wherever you you feel happy and you have your family. So I guess for me, it's about not forgetting Africa and just remembering that you know if if you can contribute in any way to development, just do so. I feel like I'm doing that in a way. Um, yeah. even though I'm here in the UK. I'm representing it well and I'm contributing to people wanting to go back and learn more about it. Yeah. Um, and that's basically it about culture tree. Yeah. Amazing. Honestly, you are facilitating a big void that within the diaspora is yeah. a big element that's missing within ourselves because we tend to get born within the system and then we think, okay, we don't really need to learn our language because we're born here or we're born in America or we're born in the Caribbean, you know, so, South America, it doesn't really matter where you're from, but if you embrace your culture and understand your roots and your history, you know, it makes it so much easier for you to adjust. And as you said, you know, no one should really forget the motherland. Mm -hmm. But it's a case of on an individual basis, you have to kind of see, okay, what are my values? What do I really take pride in? And what do I really want to know? Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's a really key thing here. Um, I think, and, I, and, and don't get me wrong, I know that there are people who do, who do feel like, you know, because I was born here, I've never been to Nigeria before, I don't really, I've never been to Africa or any country that you're from, from where your parents are from. I don't feel any affiliation to that country. Yeah. I feel like there is, there, there is that void and, and maybe when you need to step foot in the motherland to kind of fit, to feel like, yeah, there is. So there's always a yearning to know, because nobody, like, even if you're like, if you need 40 years, 50 years, you've been here, there's a void in you that's like, okay, this is where I'm from. I'm not from this country. Even though I was born here, I don't yeah. feel, anyway, they will tell you that you're not from here anyway. Yeah. <laughs> They'll remind you. <laughs> They'll ask you, so where are you from? <laughs> that's when you're going to be like, oh, um, okay. <laughs> but they'll remind you anyway that you're not from here. So at least know that this way, even though you don't feel that's where you're from, you know that's where you're from, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're spot on there. So, guys, please just try to find out, you know, and be inquisitive. Uh, have questions. Um, ask your parents. Ask your aunties. Ask your uncles. And don't be shy because I know there's a tendency, uh, for example, I can only speak for Ugandan community, that when you're growing up, you grow up, but yeah, you respect your elders, but you never really question uh, wow. some of yeah. the things, you know. So if you don't question it, that just, you know, it almost seems like a disrespect, but we shouldn't really be in that mindset of okay, what they say is 100% true. No, we totally believe our parents. We totally believe our uncles, aunties, grandparents. But mm -hmm. let's question some of the things they do say to us. Yeah. Especially we're very knowledgeable. We're very passionate people. We're very, you know, really, really clever people. But we need to start questioning some of the things that we get told to make sure that we know, okay, yeah, it may not actually be this way. They actually, need, and your parents or grandparents might say, oh, they've actually got a point, you know? And they kind about, of, there's, there's a long analogy about some monkeys that were put in a, in a I think they were put in a, a hole or something, and then they would pour water on, one of, it started off with two of them, so they poured, every time they tried to go leave the hole, they would pour water on it, 
Yeah. Um, so he, every time it would go, so it would stop. Then they would put a new monkey in. Each time they put a new monkey in, they would notice the new monkey would notice. How come these other ones aren't trying to like go up? But because every time they poured water, then they didn't. They stopped trying to like escape. Yeah. So they put a new monkey in. The, the old monkey would not not try to escape. So they they never questioned it. You know what I mean? So the old the old monkeys, the one monkey that it happened to, yeah. was the only person that experienced the water being poured on it. But all the other monkeys never had that experience before. But because they, they kind of saw other people like telling them, don't go over there, don't go over there. They didn't know why, but yeah. you know what? That's, that's the analogy I'm trying to like. A lot of us just accept things because we were told this is the way it's done. Yeah. Why are you using this pot to cook this stew? That's always how it's always been done. Yeah. Maybe you could, you know, before we use the blenders, we used to have to use our hands to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that's the way it's been done. Yeah. When you try something new, then you realize that actually there's a better way of doing this. And goes back to us you know not what you said about the past and the future we need to move away from the past learn from the past but move on to the future you know yeah of course and um where where can people find you oh you can find us on the world wide web <laughs> <laughs> that's a big place <laughs> <laughs> it's a big place www.culturetree.co.uk okay. also on instagram at culture tree on twitter on facebook all the social medias apart from what's the new one snapchat yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to stick to uh, the, normal <laughs> yeah, the normal ones. All the normal ones, Facebook, <laughs> Twitter, and Instagram. Um, we're at Culture Tree, and then the website as well, www.culturetree.co.uk. We only have your bad language right now, but we're going to expand. So if you have, is there anybody out there that wants to learn other languages and you have that skill? Remember what I said about if you have a skill and you want to, you know, help in your own way? Yeah. If there's language you want to teach and there's enough people who want to learn it, contact us <laughs> oh i think it's amazing guys we're gonna leave all the details for okay baby uh i need to i need to do more practice <laughs> Be me. yes um basically we're gonna leave all the details uh, below um of our amazing company um culture tree all the links, please contact her. Uh, and as I said, you know, if, if someone wants to contribute in terms of helping out, uh, volunteering, or wants to teach, and they've got maybe, they're, they're already running classes within their own language, and you may want to collaborate, you know, um, please just, the links will be down below. Follow it, make your comments, and let us know what you thought of the show and our amazing guest. Um, just before I go, I just want to say that what you're doing at We Africa is amazing. I think I think it's needed. A lot of us think we work, you know, a lot of our communities and, you know, Africa is a big continent, right? And there's so many countries. But we all think we have different issues. My issue is different from yours. Uh, we're different. We have different food. But we're so similar. You know, it's not, it's when you only when we get together and talk like this that we realize that there's, you know what you're saying about your, you know, grandparents. We all have the same kind of things. Yeah. And it's great that We Africa exists to bring people together. And I think a lot of us just need to work, as I said, collaborate more and just come together internally to kind of solve our own issues, not look at the external to solve it for us, but come together and do it. And I love what you're doing. Well done. Oh, thank you so much. No, we really greatly appreciate you taking your time out to come on here, talk to us just about your yeah. experience. We've learned quite a lot. Uh, we are free, as you said, we are trying to kind of bring people together into one yeah social space without the interference of the external noise you know um yeah. just making sure we have share our own ideas discuss our own issues find our own solutions um exactly. you know kind of making sure we have like self-capital social capital and then obviously yeah. we want to go through to the group capital in terms of working together and building a society and a better community we need to, we need to. what's your slogan ah the slogan is i am because we are yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, I'm looking forward to um, speaking to you again, actually. The same, same here. I'll be, I'll be, when you guys launch formally, I'll be the first person to, I'm, I'll, I'll be there, don't worry. <laughs> no, 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 thank you so much. We, no, honestly, any support we can get to just galvanize the community and making sure we're all aligning and making sure we're discussing the real issues yeah. and transparency, right. you know? This exactly. is the thing that we don't really get to do so much. We just need to have this kind of open transparent honest conversations that yeah. you know we, we tend to i think i think we do need to i think we and one of the things and I, I, I i've been saying this language is important our mother tongue we need to uphold our mother tongue we need to you know preserve our mother tongue because if yeah. we don't do it it will die you know yeah. generation after generation stop speaking it it will die so one of the things i hope you guys kind of 
push on your platform is that language aspect. Yes, we will do, 100%. Don't worry, you're going to be our ambassador. You've, Yay. you've shown, you've paved your way. I am because we are yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for watching the latest episode of We Are Free Talk. We hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as we did. Be part of the We Are Free family. Subscribe and share. And remember, we're here to shake things up, reverse the flow, and be great. I am because we are.